prayer line on, you know, hoarding. <laughs> Could have write, t you know, TV shows about them sometimes. But, uh, you know, I've got a... Um, also to quote the scriptures in Ecclesiastes, it says that truly the light is sweet and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. Uh, living in western Washington up in Tacoma, we, we know what it's like to worship the sun. Because it, when it does come, that little street coming down, you'll see 15 people going over there. We're over there and chasing the sun. We are true sun worshipers. <coughs> um, but a lot of religions and philosophies place a great importance on light. Um, you know, it, 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 as a Christian, I believe that there's a sacredness in light. That, it, that, that the light of Christ is within all of us. And it's the, the energy that creates this world, this universe. Um, in fact, you know, if you read the Bible, the very first words that God ever spoke, the first words that were written down were, anybody? Let there be light. Um, and it goes on from there to state that God saw the light and that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. You know, light, that divided light, it separates good and evil safety and fear and hope and despair. Light is, it warms us and it makes us feel comfort. Um, in the book of John it says that in him was life and the life was the light of man. That was the light which gives light to every man coming into this world. Rob, he was, he was a light. He was full of light. Um, he he was had a full heart of good things, and you know, as a kid, I was his shadow. He shone, and there I was, right behind him. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> I followed him. I tried to copy everything he did, <laughs> and <laughs> I was probably a big pain in the ass. <laughs> I know I was a. a I, I was told I was a brat as a kid. I don't really believe it. I thought I was a pretty good kid. But I've been told more than once that I was a, a spoiled brat. So I guess I might have to accept a little bit of it. But even so, I was a huge pain. He, he put up with me most of the time. Most of the time, not all the time. Um, I remember once, uh, I was about six, and he would have been nine. And we were standing in front of the, I remember standing in front of the Wilshire Theater, which is just a couple blocks down the road here. And we lived in that carpet store that Trevor was talking about, that's just a few blocks farther. Um, now this was 1961, so when a six-year-old and nine-year-old are wandering around the town, I guess it wasn't so bad back then. Nowadays you wouldn't <laughs> consider it, but back then, you know. It was okay, and uh, on the marquee <coughs> was this movie, The Blob, and <laughs> he had a lot of good talents. One of the best ones was torturing me. <laughs> He started singing this song, you know, it creeps along the floor. <laughs> that was. You know, I was six years old. And he started being the blob and, you know, and, and chasing me. And we, he chased me all the way home crying. I was crying the whole way. That's why probably I remember it, you know, so vividly. And he was just so in glee, you know, being this horrible monster chasing me through the streets of Fullerton. And, you know, and he, uh, he did that, you know, when he wasn't trying to scare me or tie me, he once he tied me to a tree, he just left me there. <laughs> I thought it was like 
for two days, but it's probably 20 minutes. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, but, but that's what brothers do. He gives knuckle burns and, and things like that. And, you know, we were, it was a, it was a carefree age, and, and he was <laughs> just as, as, as good and as bad as any brother could be. He, you know, he taught me, he taught me to ride a bike, shoot marble, <laughs> taught me to collect comic books. Um, you know, uh, all of those things. Throw a baseball. He, he, he was pretty good at it. I never was. He tried and tried to get me to, 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 to be as athletic as him, but it just somehow skipped me. You know, as you can tell, I'm t twice the size of him, but uh, um, he, he, he always wanted me to be, you know, like him in that respect. And I was right there, all in, all in. Um, you know, he even took me, you know, in 1969, I would have been 13, he was 16, just driving a car. Our friend Steve must have been about the same age. And he took us to a, I believe he drove us to a concert at the Swing Auditorium in San Bernardino. We lived out in, in Riverside at the time. We went and saw uh, Creedence Clearwater and Canned Heat. And I thought, oh, that, that was pretty cool because, you know, we played our guitars and we'd been learning Proud Mary and Susie Q and, and uh, you know, really trying to get those songs down, right? But, you know how you used to do back then, because you had a record player, and you'd pick up the record and then listen to it, play it, about do that about a thousand times. And you could maybe learn that much of a song. And, uh, but we, but, so that was a big deal. And it was a big deal that how many 16-year-olds take their 13-year-old brother to something like that? So he, he was truly a guardian light, a guardian light for me. He, uh, and I think for everyone, anyone that knew him, he, sh he would shine. You know, he'd shine in your heart. Um, you know, he was... I, I don't know, I, I really truly believe that we were created as eternal beings. And that our energy, our soul, I mean, it doesn't really matter what religion you are, if you're Christian or whatever, I think... I think most of us believe that our energy is eternal. And um, even though I believe it, it, that's, that's because of, of God and Christ, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I would truly believe that when we pass from this world, our light doesn't just go out. It shines. It shines brightly. And, and forever. And, and we become a beacon for others to follow. And I think my brother is that beacon for his, for his kids, for his grandkids, for me, for his wife. He'll always be a beacon for us. He'll, that light will never fade. Um, and I, you know, I, 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 I well, that's about all I can I'll try to do that song. Not normally something I would do, but my brother is uh, listening, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, as, as, as we think about him, I, I, I think that he, <laughs> like I said, he, he wasn't the perfect brother, but, but he was a pretty darn good one, and I, don't, I wouldn't trade him for any other one. Um, so I'm going to try and sing a song that, that means a little bit about, to me, it has some meaning. I don't know if it would to anyone else, but um, I'm just bringing the guitar in. Candle in the window. Cause 
I feel I got to move. <laughs> no, I'm gone, gone. I'll be coming home soon. Long as I can see the light. Guess I got that old traveling bone. Cause this feeling won't leave me alone, no, no. No, I won't, won't lose my way, no. Long as I can see the light. Put a candle. Cause I feel I got to move Though I'm gone, gone, I'll be going home soon Long as I